Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Thank you for Andre for having me here today. Uh, and I'd like to talk about some science that we are doing uh, at Inamin uh, and uh, particularly on uh, synthesis of building blocks. I shall give a review of our recent publications uh, on this subject. <clears throat> so, uh, my agenda for today uh, will include uh, the general overview of scientific research at Inamin. Then I shall go through some uh, trendy types of building blocks that are uh, that have been published in the recent years, including fluorinated alkanes, some boronic derivatives, and uh, organosulfur chemistry. And then I will finish with uh, some examples of application of our building block collection to our compound screen compound collection enhancement and uh, some outline. So. Uh, I mean, uh, chemists are encouraged to do scientific research and publish their results. Uh, we typically, typically publish uh, results from our internal projects as well as, as some non-exclusive uh, collaborations, uh, typically with academic institutions within Ukraine or worldwide. Uh, one of our major goals for of the, our publication is, of course, to highlight our products. Of, so uh, most of our publications are related to building block synthesis. Some are about, uh, about compound libraries and their applications. It is also a good opportunity to our uh, employees to get their PhDs and to advance their careers. So uh, we do that in collaboration with Kiev in academic institutions. And scientific research at Inamin is steadily growing. Uh, you can see this uh, by number of papers. Uh, recently, we have even established a dedicated team, so-called scientific support department, uh, which I'm heading now. So uh, we published around 30 publications uh, for two, over two of the last two years. And uh, my talk will be uh, about the results obtained by involvement uh, of this group. There are also some other groups uh, at Inamin that uh, are actively doing scientific research. So what about journals where we are typically publishing? Of course, uh, most of research is in organic chemistry, so they are typically organic chemistry journals. Uh, our top number one uh, journal is European Journal of Organic Chemistry. We have 25 publications of the last two and a half years. Of course, many publications in journal organic chemistry published by American Chemical Society. Some highly uh, high impact works are published in general journals on chemistry and even uh, or general on general scientific journals. We have some papers in Nature, in the Vantec, in JAX. Well, there are some uh, papers that are published in uh, special, specialized journals on medicinal chemistry, on combinatorial chemistry, and so on. So uh, let's start with uh, fluorinated alkane. I will not talk about the importance of fluorine. I'm sure that many of you are aware of the uh, 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 importance of fluorinated compounds to drug discovery and to many other areas. Uh, in the last decade, I suppose, fluorinated alkanes, uh, aliphatic compounds bearing fluorine, have attracted much attention. And we have a, uh, a series of works on uh, synthesis of dichlorocyclopropane. Uh, these compounds are, uh, have been hot topic in many uh, groups. <clears throat> and we have even published a book chapter uh, in the last year in emerging fluorinated motifs. And of course, we have a lot of dichlorocyclopropane building blocks in stock. Well, most of these papers shown on this slide are focused on the synthesis of functionalized uh, dichlorocyclopropanes. So if you are interested in this chemistry, I refer you to this book chapter and uh, publications shown here. But uh, today I'd like to focus on higher homologs of these uh, compounds. We have looked at uh, uh, all the, the chlorinated alkanes in the literature, and we found that there are some white spots. Uh, in particular, uh, one of them is presented by uh, two dichloro cyclobutane derivatives, and we have developed a very efficient approach, uh, which we have published in a paper called uh, List of the Cy Dichlorocycloalkanes. 
Uh, in fact, we have obtained uh, the, key, the key intermediate six on up to 100 gram scales by using this very short and very efficient reaction sequences, and then used the usual the dogs of fluorination to obtain these building blocks that are shown on the right of this slide uh, by uh, typical functional group transformations. All these compounds are now available from our stock and can be used to uh, enrich your uh, molecules with this very interesting motif. We have even studied some physical chemical properties of this compound and found an interesting feature that introducing fluorine into cyclobutane ring at the second position, in fact, decreases lipophil lipophilicity of the compounds. The uh, compound became become more lipophilic. This is uh, this can occur in uh, aliphatic series, but not it is not very common for, for fluorine. And these results were uh, published in JOC and, and featured on the cover the picture shown here. On this cover, you can see also other dichlorocycloalkanes uh, of this series. All of them are represented at our stock as the corresponding building blocks. Uh, we have thought further of expanding this compound set and uh, turn out, turned our attention to uh, cycloheptane derivatives. One might think uh, that uh, such modification is not very interesting. This is just adding CH2 group to other uh, one more CH2 group to other homologs. But in fact, we have shown in our pre previous works that cycloheptane is much more three-dimensional than all of the previously. Uh, described uh, and previously discussed uh, cycloalkanes, lower cycloalkanes, and it can provide unusual orientations of the defluoromotif and the corresponding functional group. So we have uh, put some effort into, into synthesis of these compounds and obtained all possible isomeric uh, derivatives uh, with typical functional groups that are used uh, to synthesize compound libraries. Uh, as uh, for chemistry used here, you can see that uh, for the synthesis of compounds 1, 3, we have used uh, Dillman's dichlorohomologation sequence. Uh, for uh, beta fluorinated isomers, we have applied uh, deoxofluorination again, and uh, ring expansion was the main strategy to obtain uh, the remaining uh, set of the compounds. Again, as, a, as I told pre previously, these compounds are also available from our web store. Uh, there is another way to introduce fluorine into the uh, carbocyclic systems. Uh, we can uh, use side chain fluorinated uh, derivatives. In fact, uh, we have obtained uh, a series of cyclopropane derived, cyclopropane derived uh, building blocks in bearing monofluoromethyl, difluoromethyl, and even CF3 groups. Uh, so total uh, in total 12 building blocks and we have studied their physical chemical properties too and it was found that uh, the uh, introducing fluorinated substituent uh, bearing one or two fluorine atom in fact even decreases log p uh, again uh, as as it was observed for uh, gem dichlorobutane derivatives and be, the compounds become even more polar uh, but when we go, go to trifluorinated compounds, the lipophilicity finally increases. But there was one point that was uh, uh, <coughs> uh, out, uh, that, that was not that did not follow this regularities, and we addressed this to the formation of weak interactions between the CO groups and uh, the CF3 uh, side chain. Uh, it was confirmed by Anima and X-ray studies. And uh, this example shows that uh, fluorinated side chains are interesting not only to modify uh, physical chemical properties and fine tune them, or to increase, improve metabolic stability, for example, com of compounds. Uh, they can be used also to uh, provide some additional inter in interaction with biological target and therefore to improve the compound's potency when correctly placed. In this slide, you can see all the uh, obtained building blocks. We have also switched uh, to uh, dichlor to fluorinated uh, cyclobutane derivatives uh, by similar uh, obtained by similar strategy. And again, these compounds uh, were uh, these these uh, scientific works were highlighted on the covers of the corresponding journal. We use uh, Inamin's uh, key feature uh, star star theme space theme on these covers. <coughs> 
Uh, the next part of my talk is related to uh, organoboron chemistry, and uh, you may be well aware that uh, aromatic and unsaturated uh, organoboron derivatives, boronic acids, and their derivatives are very well established as the reagents for CC and C heteroatom couplings. Uh, the last decade witnessed uh, increased interest to sp3, so they sp3 enriched counterparts, and there are many synthetic methods that allow them to use the corresponding building blocks to con construct uh, CC and C heteroatom bonds too. And uh, so we put some efforts into uh, synthesis of such building blocks. Uh, we uh, were fascinated by the idea of using cycloaddition reactions for, this, for that purpose. Uh, and uh, we have started an uh, ongoing pro project, an ongoing project on this uh, chemistry. It had started in uh, 2000 and uh, I believe uh, 19 it was, or even 18, when we studied uh, cyclopropanation by, uh, two, by two plus one cycloaddition to uh, vinyl trifluoroborate. The simplest derivative of this series is various diazolcanes. And it was found that the reaction was scalable but, and efficient, but required uh, careful optimization for each particular substrate. But nevertheless, we developed efficient methods to obtain these compounds uh, and multigram again quantities and uh, as uh, pure diastereomers via separation of uh, cis and truss isomers that are found on, on the scalpronation step. And this compound worked perfectly as partners for both Suzuki Miyover and Chen Lam couplings. So these uh, building blocks are indeed useful to introduce the fun corresponding functionalized or fluorinated cyclopropan motif into the molecules of interest. This was published in uh, Advanced Synthesis and Catalysis in 1990. Uh, and we have also use our beloved uh, before cyclopropanation. We have uh, put mu much effort into uh, previously and we applied it to trifluoroborates too. It then was found that it works, worked perfectly well here. And we obtained a series of uh, difluoroscalpropan containing built-in blocks, uh, showing a very good uh, functional group compatibility here, except maybe one or, or, or a few of them. And for example, oxytane was not stable under reaction conditions. And this was published last year in the European Journal of Organic Chemistry. Also, we have uh, some two plots of photocycloadditions, uh, which was pro promoted by photochemical, by, by photo, by, uh, photochemical conditions. Uh, in fact, we have found that malimid and benzyl malimid adds perfectly to various uh, boropinacolase and even borotrifluoroborate uh, uh, to form uh, the corresponding bicyclic cyclobutane derivatives with uh, moderate, moderate uh, stereo selectivity, but at least for the parent derivatives, these diastereomers can be easily separated. And uh, so the pure diastereomer can be obtained here. Uh, we have obtained a series of uh, disubstituted and unsubstituted uh, derivatives at this position. When we have switched to monosubstituted compound at this position, we found that the, the complex mixture of diastereum is a merciful form, which shows that the reaction has uh, follows the triplet pathway of, uh, and biotical intermediates are formed after, after activation of the uh, corresponding alkene uh, under photochemical conditions. Also, the method worked well with ma many other uh, maleic acid derivatives, malimids and maleic anhydrides, uh, so that uh, more derivatives with various substitution at the nitrogen atom or uh, lacking uh, if uh, well, well obtained. And we transformed this research into a synthesis of this very nice build, of some nice building blocks, including, for example, this one. Uh, we have shown that uh, coupling of this compound at the uh, organoboron moiety is quite possible, but it requires photoredox reaction conditions, and uh, the reaction has uh, very good diastereo, showed quite good diastereo selectivity, uh, controls it thermodynamically so that uh, trans isomer is found dominantly, predominantly. Uh, we have also published a review on various cycloaddition types in synthesis last year. 
uh, involving uh, organoboron derivatives and uh, derivatives of boronic, of boronic acids. And we are continuing this research. Uh, so if you are interested in that, you can follow us on socials or, and uh, see some news about upcoming results. Uh, we, are, we have been doing some uh, different organoboron chemistry uh, also at Inamin. Uh, for example, uh, some efforts were put to synthesis of midoboronates that are also becoming increasingly important. Uh, in particular, we, uh, we were, were able to generate uh, formula midoboronate, the smallest representative of the so-called acyl, uh, acyl midoboronates. Uh, this compound was uh, quite unstable, but it couldn't be handled in solution. And we used it to obtain uh, various very interesting derivatives, including, for example, these beta diketones. And these compounds could, could be used to uh, construct heterocyclic derivatives already bearing the organoboron moieties. For example, parasol derivatives uh, were synthesized by this methodology. And this work was uh, highlighted uh, as a hot paper in Angevante Chemie last year. Also, we have prepared alpha bromo ketones bearing uh, the midaboronate uh, function. And these compounds also undergo, underwent some heterocy typical heterocyclization with retaining the middle moiety, which could can then, then be used, for example, for Suzuki Mio reaction. This was highlighted with this nice, nice uh, cover picture. Uh, this was real painting uh, in Van Gogh style, uh, showing the, the key molecule of this study. <clears throat> Uh, and then I'd like to present you some uh, our uh, research on bicyclic salt amps. Uh, uh, you might know that uh, uh, salt amps are quite important uh, chemotypes, chemotypes for medicinal chemistry. And uh, we were fascinated by bicyclic salt amps here in the sulfonamide uh, atom uh, refract moiety at the rich head position. These compounds were discovered by Leo Packet more than 20 years ago. And they are, on, the, on one hand, uh, analogs of quinucleidines, which are, are uh, quite uh, widespread in natural products and alkaloids, in particular alkaloids. But unlike quinucleidine, uh, these sulfonamides almost do not have uh, basic properties and are protonated at, at physiological pH. On the other hand, there is a steric analog of so-called twisted amides, which are quite unstable for highly reactive compounds. In fact, they were also studied in our uh, in, uh, neighboring group headed by Professor Komarov. Uh, but unlike twisted amides, these uh, sulfonamides are quite stable compounds and uh, uh, they can be uh, handled in, in, uh, easily and uh, subjected to many chemical transformations. So they are quite useful chemotypes for uh, application in medicinal chemistry. We have started this preparation of part com compounds and used here uh, novel methodology, which was which was not uh, surprisingly applied to obtain these compounds. This is uh, quite trendy suffix reaction, uh, suffix click re reaction uh, involving intermolecular cyclization of the corresponding sulfonyl fluorides. We have found that these compounds undergo cyclization by this treatment with valve with mild base. And the corresponding sulfonamides were obtained uh, in quite good yields. We, could we managed even to obtain the, the smallest uh, packet of known so far, compound A, and it was uh, quite reactive. In fact, uh, it uh, slowly hydrolyzed under uh, acidic conditions. So we believe that this compound, uh, this chemotype, can be quite useful in design of covalent inhibitors. We are putting some efforts in, into this now. We even managed to obtain some X-ray structure for this, these compounds of, uh, containing highly strained sulfonamide bond, bonds. Also, we have studied them theoretically and uh, found that the precipitation of the nitrogen atom, which is, is a key feature that uh, responsible for the uh, properties of the sulfonamide bonds uh, for, the, for its energy. And uh, we also estimated the strain energy for this bicyclic sulfonamide, which appeared to be one of the highest values about uh, aliphatic sulfonamides, tertiary, tertiary aliphatic sulfonamides studies we have studied so far. And this was highlighted with, by this handmade painting, painting again on the uh, cover of Jog uh, last year. 
Uh, we are also uh, we also, uh, we also became interested in uh, to put in this uh, quite in the fascinating cable types into building blocks, and uh, so that they could be introduced into molecules of interest uh, for uh, medicinal chemistry studies. And this was done by, uh, synthesi by synthesis of uh, carboxylic acids shown on this slide. The first strategy included uh, uh, lithiation of the uh, sulfonamides, and most of the sulfonamides uh, survived the, the condition, reaction conditions, so indeed they are quite stable, uh, even to strongly nucleophilic reagents. Unfortunately, compound 1E uh, could not be obtained, so, so that the small uh, packet dumps still is degraded under uh, strongly basic conditions. Nevertheless, other compounds uh, were quite stable and could be handled easily. We also obtained the isomeric uh, carboxylic acids, which uh, were obtained by the same suffix strategy, suffix strategy as the uh, cyclization of sulfonyl fluoride of the type 7 uh, as the parent compounds. And these compounds uh, are now available again from our store. <coughs> Uh, we, all, we have been also synthesizing some other sulfonamides, uh, some other sultams, for example, this very nice spirocyclic sultams. Uh, you can see a part of X-ray structure for one of the derivatives uh, on the right. Uh, this was published just recently. The same strategy was used here. In fact, the cyclization of the amino sulfonyl fluoride generated in situ this time. This uh, type of chemistry was also reviewed by us, and uh, we published uh, a review article in Eurojob a year ago or so. I'd like to also to show some uh, different uh, type of sulfonamide chemistry, which is related to the cycle of 111 pentane derivatives. Uh, you might uh, be aware that uh, bicyclopentane, or BCP, as it is called shortly, uh, is uh, an esoteric analog of benzene, which is uh, studied quite intensively in the last, uh, I, should I say, uh, last, uh, around five years. And we have become interested if this uh, unit can be introduced into classical sulfur drugs, sulfonamides, for example, sulfonylamide, uh, the real compound to produce these nice building blocks. And we have developed an efficient reaction sequence to obtain these compounds, sulfonyl chlorides, uh, fluorides, uh, sorry, sulfonamides in uh, gram quantities. So, for example, this building, very nice building block is now available from our store. Uh, I'd like to show you some uh, unrelated bicyclopentane derivatives, uh, but uh, uh, this time it is the other uh, bicyclopentane. Uh, 210, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the bridges lines up to 1 and 0. Uh, it is also called Hausan because of this shape. And we developed a pretty nice uh, method to obtain these compounds, which is based on an intramolecular nucleophilic cyclization of the corresponding inlets. And uh, the compounds are produced diastereo selectively. And uh, we could obtain uh, <coughs> multigram quantities again. And we have even separated some uh, uh, NGMRs for these amyloses, for example, for example, and studied them crystallographically. Uh, also, uh, physical chemical properties uh, of these compounds were evaluated, and it, it was found that uh, they are slightly less lipophilic than the corresponding monocyclic ring systems, and then therefore, therefore they are uh, quite interesting analogs for these, uh, for the carbocyclic derivatives. Also, uh, we are thinking of uh, developing these derivatives into design of covalent inhibitors, since this bicyclic system can be opened in principle opened by nucleophilic reagents, but this is under uh, currently under progress. <coughs> And I'd like to uh, go to uh, finalizing my presentation by discussing some application of our uh, the, the world's largest collection of building blocks to uh, enhance our compound collection. I'm sure that many of you heard about our uh, product real database and real space, which is essentially uh, uh, readily accessible compounds that are uh, although being virtual, they are easily accessible. Uh, so they can be synthesized into uh, within three weeks with very high synthesis success rate, around 80%. Uh, 
and uh, we are achieve this by using our building blocks uh, collection, which have pre-validated chemical reactivity and used to uh, for virtual couple coupling. And recently, we became interested in, uh, to go into uh, three component uh, reactions, including two three step reaction sequences. Uh, uh, to uh, achieve even larger diversity than it was uh, ever accessible before. And indeed, we have shown that using only these two reaction sequences shown on the slide, so these are uh, amidation reactions and uh, amidation plus click reactions, we could uh, generate around 30 billions of compounds uh, from only these two methods to enrich our real space. Uh, not all of them are currently included, included in our uh, official real uh, database offering, but they are avail available on, upon requests. And uh, this tool is very useful, has been found to be very useful uh, for uh, in combination with virtual screening techniques. Uh, these ultra large compound libraries uh, were uh, found to be able to produce uh, nanomolar hits in uh, very short uh, leading lead times. Uh, and uh, novel chemotypes arise quite easily from this uh, huge diversity. Uh, this was done in, uh, in a collaboration with uh, Professor John Irwin, and uh, there were some nature publications highlighting this research. You can find reference to them in this high science paper here. Uh, this is the methodology to generate of this, this uh, multi-billion chemical space is described. Also, we have become interested in if this methodology can be uh, can be used for synthesis of some uh, particular compound collections, for example, microcyclic derivatives. And indeed, we have uh, used uh, three-component reaction uh, sequences involving uh, quite simple and robust transformations, that is, amid couplings, the protections, and uh, closing metathesis to obtain a, a, a collection of microcycles that was uh, that is exceeding uh, 100,000 compounds, uh, so-called macrospace. I believe that this name can be coined for that. Uh, also having some somewhat lower success rate, but this is 61%. Uh, but uh, this is quite good result for. Uh, compound set that uh, is prepared in four to five step is including to chromatographic verification. But what is more important, even more important perhaps, that uh, some of these compounds can have high uh, functionalities uh, that can be either protected them and uh, used as building blocks. And this methodology worked perfectly well to obtain the compounds uh, on ground scale. And uh, we have enriched our building block collections with these microcyclic derivatives. And uh, this uh, Research was uh, published in Eurojob just recently and highlighted by this very like uh, nice uh, cover picture where the uh, microcycle uh, scaffold is represented as a spaceship uh, delivering some microcyclic derivative uh, microcyclic compounds uh, <coughs> delivering some microcyclic compounds. And uh, in the outline of my talk, I'd like to uh, go to, to, to highlight our uh, recent review article uh, in which we uh, provide some thoughts about the relationship between drug discovery and organic chemistry in general, and some important concepts, uh, including our real concept uh, or uh, building blocks design concept, are handled, highlighted in this paper. Uh, so, uh, if you are interested, you can uh, check it this uh, in Chemistry European Journal. And if you have become interested uh, in our research, uh, we are uh, look for, for for our updates on our socials. We are uh, constantly uh, posting something about our news about papers on Twitter, for example, and many other socials. Uh, and uh, with this, I would like to thank you for your contribution. If there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you very much, Alexander, for the insightful presentation. It Indeed, a lot of research is going on um, in our company and a lot of new stuff is, is happening. And we have a number of questions from our uh, listeners. So uh, let me start uh, with those. And uh, the first one, uh, some of uh, uh, basically, will you be able to provide slides to our uh, 
to our listeners because we will certainly be sharing video but somebody is asking for slides as well is it a possibility hey, uh, I, I think we shall uh, post this presentation on our website so it will be available there okay great thank you uh and now a couple of specific chemical questions so uh any interest in gem defluorinated as a paints to go with the fluorinated cycloheptanes uh, I don't think that they uh, should be uh, problematic against paints filters. Uh, in, currently, we are doing some research on uh, their metabolic stability, and I don't think that uh, as a pre our preliminary results show that they uh, don't have problem with that. So. Uh, and um, I don't think that's, that uh, violating some pains uh, should be a problem with, with these compounds. Okay. And um, the next question, are bifunctional uh, fluorinated cycles planned or available, for example, amino alcohols? Uh, so far, uh, we do not have plenty of them, as I think. But that's a nice idea to empower our collection. Thank you for this suggestion. 